Hello, everyone, and welcome to week 15, Racializing Arabs and Muslims. The reading for this week comes from two articles that are available on Canvas. The reading talks about the contradictions experienced post 9-11 by Arabs and Muslims. On the one hand, there were sympathetic representations of Arabs and Muslims in the media, ensuring Americans that they were not the enemy. Yet at the same time, hate crimes and discrimination against Arabs and Muslims increased. The government passed the Patriot Act, which targeted these groups for surveillance and arrest. The National Security Entry Exit Registration System was put in place requiring males from 24 Muslim countries to be photographed, fingerprinted, and register their home addresses with the INS. And young Arab and Muslim men were targeted for quote unquote voluntary interviews, assuming that they would have some information about potential terrorists. <clears throat> the impact these experiences had on Arabs and Muslims, including feelings of depression, sadness and shock, fearful of being targeted by the government, censoring their behavior and religious markers in public to try to decrease some of this negative attention, and also feeling excluded from the national grieving process, because as we see, there are Muslims who are Americans and were feeling just as distraught, just as sad about um, the lives that were lost on that day. The reading talks about the various representations that have existed in the media across time of this population. Men are often represented as either rich oil sheiks or more recently as terrorists, while women have been represented as belly dancers, harem girls, or as oppressed veiled women. While in many of these films and television shows, white heroes are always appear as saviors of either Arab women from oppressive Arab men or good Arabs from bad Arabs. Once again, we see a group defined as a quote unquote national threat to US culture, economy, and way of life. We also see the same pattern where by defining Arabs and Muslim groups as other, the U.S. gets to define itself as the opposite of them. So the U.S. constructs itself as the land of equality and democracy, culturally diverse and civilized, and a land of progressive men and liberated women. The reading discusses how in contrast to previous eras where racism against other groups could be blatant, this time in a time period of multiculturalism and the US seeing itself as post-racial, both the media and government attempt to strike a balance. She uses the idea of simplified complex representations to discuss how this balance appears in both our government policies and representations in the media. <clears throat> the distinction between a bad Arab, Arab or Muslim versus a good one is based on proving their allegiance to the US. As the author states, sympathetic images of Arabs and Muslims after 9-11 give the impression that racism is not tolerated in the United States, despite the slew of policies that have targeted and disproportionately affected Arabs and Muslims. Some of the other examples that she discusses of simplified complex representation includes providing copies of the Quran and time to pray to prisoners in Guantanamo, including a statement within the Patriot Act condemning discrimination against Arab and Muslim, Amer and Muslim Americans. And this becomes a way of undermining the fact that discrimination was being experienced by these groups. And once again, I apologize for the noise in the background. My dog is uh, very excited to be playing with his ball this morning, um, but it's the only way I can keep him from barking. So um, hopefully you can bear uh, with me. Now the reading also talks about the particular representations of Muslim and Arab women. 
where they are represented as veiled oppressed women in need of rescue, uh, where the US needs to quote unquote save brown women from brown men, where a call, uh, th this kind of representation calls for audiences reaction of sympathy and outrage. And it's a particular outrage against the men, culture and religion of this region. The image of oppressed Muslim women supports the narrative that they hate us for our freedom. The author discusses three versions of sympathetic complex representations of Muslim women in particular. The news media include a disclaimer when speaking about how Islam oppresses Muslim women by stating that they're not talking about all of Islam. They also uh, use uh, individual Muslim women's stories of now being liberated from Islam, <clears throat> where they appeared on TV shows, sharing their stories of oppression under Islam and how they're now, liber now liberated as a result of coming to the United States. And these two representations produce the desired sense of outrage and pity from US audiences. And the reading I talked about um, the example of the Saving Amina Lawal campaign um, and how it was depicted in the Oprah Winfrey show in particular, um, and how that story and the way that story was told um, created this sense of outrage and pity for these women. And the clip here um, is a description of and a recording of uh, the uh, speech that was given by First Lady Laura Bush that really demonstrates this kind of narrative around um, Arab women. The realities that these narratives erase <clears throat> uh, include the fact that US involvement in the Middle East has upheld oppression of women as well as conditions that result in terrorist attacks, it raises the impact of the US military involvement um, in these regions on Muslim women. It also erases the efforts by Muslim feminists themselves to address patriarchal interpretations of Islam. So it makes it seem as if Muslim women need American feminists to speak for them or to address their uh, oppression and that these women themselves haven't been uh, discussing these issues um, for, for years, right? <clears throat> Political and religious fundamentalisms that exist in the US are also uh, obscured or erased when you only present Muslims as being the only ones who are fundamentalists and extremists. And it also erases oppression and violence against women that does exist in the US. The reading talked about how uh, feminism was used during this time to create these narratives about having to liberate Arab and Muslim women. And as it states, embedded feminism is the incorporation of feminist discourse and feminist activists into political projects that claim to serve the interests of women, but ultimately subordinate and or subvert that goal. And the clip here takes you to, um, a video where uh, Muslim American young women uh, themselves define themselves as feminists and talk about being both feminist and Muslim American. So that uh, brings this lecture to a close. Hope you guys have a good week and I will see you next time.